I was a kid, I spent half my time in the living room performing for people. I spent the other half the time in my bedroom by myself, writing poetry and sketching. I was not the type of kid you could say, as a punishment, go to your room, because my room was heaven to me. My isolation was welcome. I sketched all the time, but I didn't do a lot of painting. Suddenly, six years ago, at a time when I was trying to heal a broken heart, I decided, well, maybe I'll paint. You can tell what I love by the color of the paintings. You can tell my inner life by the darkness in some of them, and you can tell what I want from the brightness in some of them. And I looked back and I thought, well, I was two people my whole life. I was in the living room entertaining people, being a monkey, you know, doing my thing for the company and, and trying to relieve my mother who was suffering. She had uh, rheumatoid arthritis and phlebitis and everything, everything under the sun that was nagging at her and she was depressed. And I wanted her to be free. And I wanted her to realize that her life was worth something because she gave birth to someone who was worth something. And then I would go into my room and I would sit with a legal pad. <laughs> I was a little kid. And I would sit there and I would try to figure out what it meant, what it was all about. Why are we here? What is this? And one day, I read something from Buddha that said that all spirituality is about relieving suffering. And I suddenly realized, that's what I'm doing in the other room. <laughs> and, and I'm aligned. You know, this, my purpose is aligned with this. I don't know if Jesus is real. I don't know if he lived. I don't know what he means, but the paintings of Jesus are really my desire to convey Christ consciousness. I wanted you to have the feeling when you looked in his eyes that he was accepting of who you are. I wanted him to be able to stare at you and heal you from the painting. You can find every race in the face of Jesus, and I think that's how every race imagines Jesus. They imagine him as their own. presents all the different modes of life and all the different people and all the different things we go through, but it's important to remember, especially for me, I would never show up anywhere if I didn't understand that everyone was broken in some way, you know? It represents form uh, coming out of uh, energy, is what, what, what I believe all of, all of us are. We're just, you know, conscious awareness dancing for itself for no other reason but to, uh, to uh, stay amused. It's a weird thing when I paint. I, I sometimes don't know what I'm painting until about a year later in therapy. Kind of cool what happens with these things, you know, because you really don't know what a sculpture or a painting totally means. You think you do. Most of the time I start out with a plan and then you know, like a year later, I'll realize that the painting was telling me what I needed to know about myself a year before. I found myself looking around at one point in a really bleak winter in New York, and it was just so depressing, and I think I needed color. You know, the bottom line with all of this, whether it's performance or it's art or it's sculpture, 
is love. We want to show ourselves and have that be accepted. I love being alive and the art is the evidence of that. Trump is toast. <laughs> And so you just kind of digest a, the news of the it's day? It's an affirmation. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm glad some good is coming out of this stuff. This is uh, Robert Mueller. Yeah, this Mueller. is uh, Robert Mueller putting the squeeze on the president. I want a little... Just to relieve the stress, uh -huh. you know what I mean? This is stress reliever. And here we have... That's Space uh, Force. That's, that's Space the Force, yeah. That's the beginning of Space Force. <laughs> that's right. It makes me you feel good. His latest work, a garish portrait of White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. The message that he tweeted called her a so-called Christian whose only purpose in life is to lie for the wicked. Monstrous, he says. I mean, look, it's the typical double standard that we see on the left. What I'm so impressed with is just how quickly the double standard seems to take place. It was, what, 48 hours ago that Connor Lamb was saying that any and all comments made against Nancy Pelosi were sexist, but I'm not holding my breath for him to say the, say the exact same thing about our press secretary, Sarah Sanders. Yeah, you're right. There is a double standard there. And don't Democrats, don't they preach and march and protest and have women's marches and they say tolerance, tolerance, tolerance? Where's the tolerance here? Dad, was a minister before he became governor, and uh, Jim Carrey is attacking her faith too. He says this is a portrait of so of a so-called Christian. What are your what's your reaction to that? It's ugly, and you're right. It This painting offers an expression of love and appreciation to womankind, and the signal of welcome to all sacred feminine tenderness. So apparently. He's celebrating women, unless you're conservative? Uh, that's exactly right, and that is exactly what uh, modern feminism seems to be today. Even though, you know, my cartoons might be a little crass, I'm being crass because I believe that we need to be crass totally. right now in, in a way. And, and yet with kindness, with, lo with love, we have to express this, this horrible feeling that we have. I think what makes someone an artist is they make models of their inner life. They make something physically come into being that is inspired by their emotions or their needs or what they feel the audience needs. Art has to be service, you know, it's like you're servicing your subconscious and at the same time you're doing something that someone's going to relate to, hopefully. 